uh, good morning so today we shall go for the under unit piles so before that i would like to tell you that we have uh, started the unit 3 unit 3 consists of two parts first one is the design of cello foundation and second is the deep foundation or pile foundation so in case of pile foundation we have already completed the necessity of pile foundation usage of piles yes, in study lectures we talked about uh, pile installation or pile driving today we shall go for the underimed piles underimed piles you can see here a underimed pile is one with any large base or a bulb the bulb is called underimed see this is the pile this is the underimed right so this is also called a bulb so underimed piles three three underimed are there in this figure you can see three underimed are there so what we can say if there is one under rim it is called a single underimed pile and if there are more than two under rims it is called a multi under rim piles right under rim piles definitely it is a cast in situ piles so what we have to do for this how we can construct the under rim piles definitely it is a cast in situ piles we have to we have to make a bore hole at the site and at the required depth we can insert the under rim under rimming tool that is called under rim tool also under rim or under rim tool at at required depth we can make a bulb right so depending upon the load of the structure you can make a bulb so it can be carried out in sand uh, in sandy and in clay soil both the underrims are formed by a, a special underriming equipment right the ratio of the bulb size to the pile shaft size varies from 2 to 3 but usually we take 2.5 what do you mean by this 2.2.5 what is the meaning bulb size see the bulb size diameter of the bulb divided by the diameter of this pile shaft this is called a pile shaft okay so diameter of the bulb divided by this pile shaft will be equal to either 2 or 3 or 2.5 so we have to maintain the ratio of the bulb size to the pile shaft size 2.5 definitely whenever you are going to put the bulbs the bearing capacity of this wire is going to increase depending upon the size of the bulbs as well as the number of bulbs more number of bulbs more bearing capacity right if the area of the bulb is more bearing capacity will also be more that means it can take the more structural load we can see how we can calculate the load capacity of a single under pile here i would like to remind you in fifth semesters we have discussed about the load carrying how we can determine the load carrying capacity of the pile so pile load test we have also discussed dynamic formula a static formula right so this is just like a static formula so you can see here qp is nothing but load capacity of underimed pile qeb load carried by the end bearing right at the bottom of the pile the load carried by at the, at the bottom of the pile and qs be the load carried by the asking friction right so further what we can write this is the load this is also load qeb also load qsf is also load so load is equal to stress into area so here you can see the qb is the unit point bearing capacity of a bulb because bulb is at the bottom so the uh, this area uh, qb is the how much stress is there so that stress we can calculate at the bottom of the pile uh, bottom of the pile yes in area of the bulb right so area into stress is equal to load similarly a skin friction into area of the surface surface means what the perimeter of this shaft 
right? Then we can calculate the ultimate load capacity of a single pile. FS is the unit screen friction. AB is the area of this a section of the bulb. And AS is the surface area of the embedded, embedded, embedded pile. You can see here the single underimed pile. This is the bulb. And DU means what? Diameter of the underim. Diameter of the underim. And this is the diameter of the shaft. Here you can see the F is written. F, F. That is the skin friction. Right? The load carried by the perimeter of the pile shaft. This is called as a, this is also called a pile shaft. And here QP, QUP, P is not there. You can write P also. QP, that, that means load capacity of a single underwing pile. You can see here, we have to take the, the, these diameters. You can see these arrows, how the, it is going to take the load of the structure, how the bearing capacity is going to increase. So QB is nothing but the stress developed at the base of the bulb. So in case of single bulbs, uh, we can calculate the load capacity of the uh, single underwing pile. Similarly, you can see this is single underwing uh, uh, piles which we have seen in the previous slides and uh, uh, this is uh, double underwing piles, double underwing piles. So in this case you can see three things are there. The, here the shaft, the pile shaft is also there, right? And here we have to, actually we have to calculate the QUB. QUP, ultimate load capacity of the double and unit pile, using three components. Three components means what? Three components means load carried by the base of the bulb, these parts, and load carried by these parts, the center to center. See, you can see AA to AA and A dash, A dash. So, this part will have load separately, and this part, the soft part, will have load separately. We'll take the load separately. So three components of uh, will be there in the formula. These components and these components and the bottom of the bottom parts. You can see this also you have to remember. The center to center distance of the bulb varies from 1.5, 1.25 DU to 1.5 DU. DU is the diameter of the under rim. This is called under rim or bulb. Mm -hmm. So diameter of the under rim DU. So 1.25 to 1.5. D. You can see the formula for multi underwing piles, how we can calculate the load carrying capacity for the two bulbs, multi underwing with two bulbs. So, QUP, QB into AB, right? Here we are going to take directly the, in the form of a, the, the stress into area is the load, right? In three components. The, this is the first component, this is the bottom part components. Right, and this is the uh, top part components. We can top, top part, the frictional assistance and the area of the shaft, and this is the middle part, right? F bar S into A bar S. So three components are there. See, so the area of the section on the lowest bulb, F is unit is which surrounding the shaft. There is the top part, right? It is written also surface area of the embedded portion of the pile above the top bulb and F dash is, is equal to unit frictional resistance between swirl and the swirl along the cylindrical surface. That means in between the two bulbs, the values of F dash S we have to use. Here, the A dash S we have to use the area of the cylinders in between the two bulbs. In between the two bulbs, this we have to keep in our mind surface area of a cylinder bounded by the diameter of the bulb and the distance between the centers of the extreme bulbs means the distance between the two bulbs right so area surface area of the in between the two bulbs we have to take and the screen friction also we have to take the in, 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 we have to take the in between the for the, in between the two bulbs we can say so three components are there this is the bottom parts this is the center parts and this is the top parts so these three things are going to take the load of the structure. You can see this figure. This is called an underimming tools. Bottom hinge, top hinge. See two types of uh, underimming tools uh, normally comes in the market. 
you can see how uh, we, have, we have to use the under rib. First, we have to make a borehole and suppose you want to make the under rim at 3 meter depth. Your whole depth is suppose 10 meter for example. And you want to make a under rim at 2 meter depth from the ground surface. So what we shall do? We shall Im Im immerse, right? We shall enter the under rim tools at 2 meter depth and then it, we shall rotate it. Once you are going to rotate it, in the hole a bulb will be formed, right? Similarly, how many bulbs you want to uh, use, uh, it, it depends upon the type of a structure. So you can see here it is called a bottom hinge means this, this, this part bottom parts are hinged here and here top hinge means here top part. Here also hinging hinge is there, here also hinge is there. So the two types are there, two types of under rim tools are there. So this is all about the under rim tools. So we have completed the unit 3, right? Unit 3, first part design of shallow foundation and second part necessity of pile foundation and pile insulation or pile driving and this is third part the single under rim and double under rim piles. So this is all about your topic and uh, uh, tomorrow we shall go for the unit 4, right? And I would like to tell you, you can revise all the other, other parts of the pile foundation like group settlements, negative screen frictions, right? Group efficiency of the piles, which you have already studied in fifth semester. So you can go through that parts, right? So we shall go to the unit four in the next lectures. Thank you.